Hi, this is Sean. In this video, I'm going to go over uh, how to make some different texture effects. So in the beginning here, let me just sort of show a few of the uh, texture effects that I'm eventually going to go over. So there's one that will shift based on distance, um, how to get, you know, with just one set of textures, very different effects how to incorporate pulses of glowing objects. Here's a displacement shader um, that's warping and displacing. This one also will, as you move left and right, it uses the bump offset to do a um, you know, sort of a fake parallax shift in the, in the image. Sort of see around different sides. So, all right, so let's get started. Oh, and also how to implement a, um, a decal texture. All right, so, and I'll probably break these up into several different videos over the next few days. But um, I think the one that I want to start out with now is this one, uh, these three doors. And so, um, and I'll even probably do a, you know, at the end I'll probably do a revision because um, I want to... Um, do this in a way where all of the doors will sort of stem out of a base material. Um, but for now, I'm just going to basically focus on um, how to achieve how to achieve uh, a bit with um, single file textures. Okay, so. Um, and then also just go over, just sort of review a workflow for combining normal maps as well. All right, so let's do that. First of all, in Photoshop, I just want to show that I've got this texture and it's got, instead of creating a single image out of the RGB and then alpha channels, instead in each of the channels, it has a separate black and white file texture. And so, Basically, I've got this one, which is potentially a mask, um, or like maybe a transparency mask. This one, it's got just the, a tileable wood grain, which when combined with a multiplier can be you know, colored. Um, here we've got uh, an AO pass. Uh, you could put other decals. And then finally in the alpha channel, we've got sort of a secondary transparency or a painted look. This is supposed to look like maybe a frosted glass or something. So you could just, the, the idea is that one, um, 1K image at 32 bits, like a 32 bit Targa that will hold it, uh, an alpha channel is just about four megabytes. And it's also sort of, a, it's got a bunch of draw, it's got a draw call associated with it. Uh, and you reduce all of that by putting in different, um, uh, you know, getting all of these, you get sort of four for one. And so uh, let's uh, talk about how this is implemented. So I could just create a new shader. So let's go in and just build, just like rebuild this. So I'm going to right click, create a new material. We'll call this a uh, door revision and let's start bringing in the file textures. So I've got the normal map and, um, and, and then also I made a, a wood grain normal. So, and let's just, uh, Put this, and so it's useful to have Photoshop open, so you can flip back and forth and see. Okay, well, in the green channel here, I've got um, the wood grain. So if we go in and we just plug this into the base, and if we show this off, let me make this full screen. If we show this off. Um, but there's no color. So how do you get some color on there? Well, um, ideally, also, if we're going to do this the right 
what I would consider more along the realms of, a, of the right way, we would we really want to start working towards base materials. So instead of just plopping in textures, what you do is use texture parameters, which then you can instantiate. Um, so so uh, the 2D uh, texture sampler node, so this would be like door color or just a color um, texture. And then you can drag in the into the, the texture swatch. And, and um, same thing goes with, um, we'll call this one uh, normal gross and probably like normal fine. So, and then we can just, uh, so the normal fine texture is here and the normal gross is here. And that just gives us, uh, by doing it this way, down the line, we've got a lot more latitude for instantiating different textures. Um, and so uh, getting back to where we were before, how do we um, create you know, different colors um, to go with that wood grain. So I would do a um, a texture parameter vector file. So this would be colorize parameter. And if you double click, you can sort of choose, let's just choose like a, a wood color. And so now if we take these and we multiply them together, I'm holding down the M key on the keyboard, we can go in and uh, take that green parameter and multiply it with the colorized parameter. And now if we plug that into the base color, we've got, um, you know, a basic wood color with a grain to it. Okay. And so now let's start plugging in our, our, um, normal maps. And so in terms of combining normal maps, if you want to do it the right way, well, there's actually there's sort of some new ways in, in Unreal, but um, sort of a common way would be to use the a component mask where you grab just the R and the G channels from one and then you uh, append, uh, append the vectors and then you um, and you append it to a component, um, component one, and just you can just drop that in, in, in order to uh, uh, combine these, which then you combine them all by adding, by holding down the A key. And that allows you now to um, combine two normal maps. And so now we're getting, getting a little bit more detail on this. But the, the whole point of having a fine normal map is that uh, this gross normal map will be well and good, but by applying a tileable fine texture, um, you, can, you can get a lot of extra perceived quality. And so um, in order to tile this, you need to plug in a texture coordinate index. Um, so. And we're going to take that. And since this uh, normal map of the wood grain was derived as, you know, in the same way that the normal map, the wood grain was derived here, I'm going to plug this in to both of these. And so now what we can do is we can sort of say like, you know, four and two or and see how that's starting to look. So we're getting a lot more um, detail. We could probably even go like, we could try to reverse that. Let's see, like five and four. And so, yeah, we've got a lot of detail and in the wood grain and it's all from this one texture. So, and we could create a duplicate of this that it doesn't have multiple coordinate indexes and take the, um, I think it was the, the blue channel and plug that into the, um, the ambient occlusion. 
And if we wanted to, we could make this uh, transparent. Um, and so if we needed to make this transparent, the first thing we want to do is tell this that you know we can make a transparent shader. So go in and um, modify the blend mode. So I'm going to say masked. That, um, and so you know maybe a, a, a opacity mask using this. Ah, so and here I made this. I reversed this uh, with the idea that um, you know quite often you'll do different tricks with reversing um, the different masks that you have. And so here I've inverted the transparency. So this could be um, so I could either go back into Photoshop and reverse this, or I could simply use a modifier. Um, so I'm hitting Alt right. Uh, left click and I'm going to to detach that and I'm going to just put in a, a one minus which is the reverse node for um, uh, for that so let's replug the red node uh, in here and go into uh, and the opacity mask now so there we go got the uh, a transparency built in and so, you know, maybe if we wanted to, we could sort of say, well, like the specular or the, you know, some sort of, you know, we could we could do additional masks, which would, you know, extend the uh, the capabilities of this further. But I think this is a good place to stop. We've gone 11 minutes and um, uh, we could drop this on to, so to finally apply this and then we could sort of drop this on to one of these doors here similar to this one. Um, so here's the door revision. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching.